Hello, beautiful women of the world, wherever you are, welcome, welcome to my show, your radiant life after 45. This show is for women who are not done living yet. We talk about health and happiness and um, purpose and all things that uh, women of a certain age uh, want to know because we wore already so many hats. So we don't talk about um, having babies or, or childbearing, but maybe about being a grandmother. Anyway, welcome to my show. And today I do something specific or special. I do not have a guest on my show today, um, but I want to share something with you, something that I have written and I will share it with you, a story, okay? And it is about how perception can, can change everything. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer said, when you change how to look at things, the things you look at change. And that's what I will prove to you because I have experienced it. It is a story that I experienced many, many years ago. I think about almost 10 years ago now. So I'm going to share the story with you, how I um, have written it down, <laughs> okay? So it's storytelling time right now. It was a hot summer's night and all guests had happily departed. I felt delighted because it turned out to be yet another truly successful evening. The beautifully hand-painted dishes towered in, on my kitchen counter though leaning slightly out of perfect alignment, four different sizes of plates stacked with silver spoons, forks, knives, and leftover morsels silently lurking between the layers made the entire compilation seem dangerously shaky and high. Delicate hair thin wine and champagne glasses carefully set down mostly in one place, looked like a frighteningly large lot begging to be washed, rinsed, and polished. I had 12 of every sized plate and glass in my china cabinet, and all of them were used today, this evening, and now soiled and waiting to be cleaned, dried, and put back into their resting place, ready for next time. So why did I not fill my dishwasher with what would have been several loads, but it would have been so much easier? <clears throat> I could not because this was my finest china and most delicate crystal glasses. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a slight cold. <laughs> so the hand painted design would fade if I would put it in the dishwasher. The delicate riedel glasses would break and the silver cutlery would turn yellowish and dull. This was not an option. So the only other solution was to leave it all and deal with it the following day, which I hated to do. What I needed to face in that moment was just getting on with it. But where's the start? <laughs> After a large meal and a few glasses of wine, I was fatigued and really unhappy being left to clean up this mess all by myself. Oh yes, not only had our guests gone home to retire, but my sweet husband was also on his way to rest his weary head, giving me a last wave of good night, sweetheart, through the open kitchen door. His eyes expressed sorrow and also encouragement simultaneously as he offered a forced smile before disappearing out of sight. Then I heard him say on his way to the bedroom, leave it until tomorrow. And it echoed from down the hallways as if fairies would surprise me in the morning with a sparkling clean kitchen. And I love to start fresh in the morning, 
So I immediately um, resigned myself to tackling the enormous chore. I took a deep breath and started separating and organizing and scraping the dishes, scraping gently the leftover foods of those delicate china. This was when it began echoes of self, this, this <sighs> victimizing thoughts, self deprecating, victimizing thoughts, all centered around feeling abandoned yet again, after having labored all afternoon, shopping, cooking, setting up our house beautifully, sensing every wish and fulfilling it before anyone could utter a word. I love to do this. Serving my guests still thrills me, but the time the food was consumed seemed fractional to the time it took to prepare it. That's not fair, I muttered. The entire monologue looped in my head over and over until I felt so sorry for myself that physical pain started to creep down from my head into my other part of all the, all the other parts of my body. I felt miserable and had to force myself to continue what I started in the kitchen. Then to make matters worse, the monologue turned into a dialogue with nobody, with the phantom, with nobody. But I imagined the nobody was my husband, to whom I complained heavily until I heard myself hissing unpleasant words through my clenched teeth. All the while, he was obviously and oblivious to all of that and obviously sleeping sweetly in our comfortable bed, far away from the kitchen, from our kitchen that I felt abandoned in. This chaotic buzz in my head intensified until the red, so the red so zone, like a four star or five star alarm, gave me a warning. My hands started to shake and I knew I could not continue unless I became numb to the present danger of either breaking dishes or seriously overloading my nervous system. So I stopped and walked out of the balcony where a warm breeze welcomed my quivering body. With its comforting embrace, my shoulders immediately relaxed and I slowly started to feel better. Then I looked up into the starry sky where a half moon raced through the clouds, raced through the clouds, sketching openings. Staring in fascination, I laughed at the tricks my eyes played on me. Of course, it wasn't the moon that was racing, but the clouds that raced across the night sky. This optical illusion caused me to pause and turn inward. Then a thought magically appeared from behind the clouds in my mind. Is perception everything? Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Is perception everything? And yes, it was so profoundly simple and yet so incredibly powerful. What I felt that night was obviously a reflection of what I saw. But what if what I was seeing was merely merely an interpretation of the events around me? And what if I changed the way I looked at things? Could my feelings change too? Does my perception change everything? My dreamlike state changed gradually, then powerfully into an almost uncontrollable shaken in my body. There was the urgency of a radical change going on, which I can only compare to a physical birthing of um, each of my five children, when a mighty unseen power overtook my body. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Tears of release and gratitude streamed down my face. Tears streamed down my face and the release and gratitude felt like a divine energy of great love and wisdom that seemed to be taking the burden, the heavy burden from me. And a deep inner knowing emerged. I could hear it clearly, even though it seemed to come from deep in my heart. It does not matter what happens around you or who, who it is, who is with you. This is only you and your conscious choice deciding how to see, experience, and respond to a situation. This sudden sense of knowing was so absolute that I felt like a divine force burned it into my body, into my brain with an with the non-consuming fire of intensity. So does this mean that my mind and emotions create my experience to which my body reacts instantly? I wondered about this momentarily and decided to return to my dirty, uh, dirty kitchen and dirty dishes with new eyes. Rather than seeing the leftover laden dishes, I gazed at the plates with their partially covered beauty that wanted to be fully revealed, covered with soiled leftovers. Taking a deep breath and smiling, I was ready for a new experience. So I slowed everything down, especially my physical movements. Rinsing the china and cutlery under clear, clear water became now an observation with no feelings of stress or nor pleasure. Observation. I felt strangely awake and alert now. In no time, all the dishes were stacked up neatly again and ready to be thoroughly washed and polished. I washed myself filling the basin with fresh warm water and squeezing a small amount of dishwashing detergent into the running stream of water. Soapy bubbles appeared, displaying countless tiny rainbows. And then I felt the softness of this soapy solution, which stimulated my sense of touch. Immersing the first plate into the soft, soapy water became a sensual experience. While my fingers were gliding over the painted surface, I felt the smoothness of the glaze, which was only occasionally interrupted by the slight elevations of the painting and the outside golden rim. The beauty of the design dazzled my eyes when the shiny wet plate emerged from the water. The delicate design of color and shape started communicating with my sense of beauty, bringing sound and movement into my meditative state of surrender. I lost track of time. And to my surprise, all the dishes were done more swiftly than I could have ever expected. All exhaustion had disappeared. My body actually felt calm and surprising, surprisingly restored, like I just had awakened from a beautiful sleep. And I stayed awake, feeling new life as the next day began and confirmed by a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. And that next morning, the sunrise was 10 times as beautiful as I've ever seen it before. My perception had changed. So once again, I stepped outside onto the balcony, overlooking the turquoise ocean. I live in the Bahamas, <laughs> right on the beach. So I have that beautiful view. And I smiled facing the sun, feeling a tremendous wave of gratitude and new strength and empowerment. I had been honed to align with my true essence. I was alive with renewed energy and passion and eager to apply this new awareness 
as fast as I could daily and for the rest of my life. So from that night on, it became more and more natural for me to shift into a different mindset. Each time I needed to accomplish a task that evolved, that evoked feelings of displeasure or feelings of resistance. From contemplating menial task to navigating frustrating situations and difficult moments in my relationships. But whenever I felt resistance, I created a new pathway in my brain. Like I did that beautiful evening on the balcony, high up between the ocean and the starry sky in the moonlight. Invariably, I see a new possibility arise whenever I change my mind or I take another stance, I decide to change my perception. Now I see new possibilities rise and magically this allows me a fresh sense of enjoyment for whatever I have to do. So during the past 25 years, this has deepened my understanding and has guided me to apply and live this incredible revelation, which is a truth. And we so often just, um, I would say, locked into the way we always think. So we don't have that experience to see something in a different way. And then uh, changing the experience because your physical body reacts to it, your whole nervous system re reacts to it. This does not mean, even though I'm applying this now for the last about, I would say, yes, from the time that happened, it's, it's almost 20 years. I have been living this truth. This does not mean I live in constant bliss, but my spiritual awakening has continued to bring tremendous gifts of wisdom, harmony, and love into my life. And it became my mission to wake up and empower others, especially women. This is why I am here. This is why you listen to me. Women who are ready to take ownership of their lives. And my greatest joy emerge, it comes up, emerges when I see uh, positive shifts in my family, my friends, and my clients. And those shifts from just a moment of recognition that then changes how you look at things. Again, when you change the way you look at things, the very thing you look at changes. Isn't that powerful? I believe it's, it's something that we so often forget. And I wanted to share this with you today because there is so much tragedy, so much strife and... Um, horrific events going on in, in the world. Today, I think more than ever, I cannot say ever before, because I only know the time that I have been alive. I only heard and read about the time before me, the Second World War, and, and all, all wars are horrific, absolutely horrific and we have to get away from it. And yet, since most things in the world, we cannot change, what we can change is how we want to see something. We can lament and we can be angry and we can um, discuss things and disagree and become um, disagreeable and become really, really upset, or we can see how we can shift our 
the way we we see certain things. And is there something that I can do? Is there something that you can do that brings about change for others? Because to to be true, what what is out there in the world and we see on the media can tremendously affect your health when you get so much locked into it that that you become terrified that that you're that you take in all of these impressions and and all of these pictures and even though you cannot change it cannot do anything these pictures destroy your health but do what you can do be a bringer of light be a peacemaker and it starts in the in the small area of your of of your surroundings in your family amongst your friends in your community being a peacemaker in our life now is more important than ever before. There are always two sides or even more to a situation that is in stress. One says, this is the truth. The other side, no, this is the truth and they clash. There is always some part of the truth that, that is correct but it's not the whole truth and it's also very often <clears throat> things happen because of events long long before the time when the the discord or the war or the um the fight breaks out you see your true nature is love and peace. And so is every living, every living creature. It's in the animal world. There is cooperation, there is love and peace. Yes, for the for the purpose of hunting and and eating. There is there is war. The lion needs to eat, so the the lion attacks the the gazelle. But the others stand by because they know this is just a natural part of of life. But what we are, what we humans are doing, is not a normal part of life. The feuds the wars, the, dis the disagreements. Yes, you can have disagreement. And <laughs> something just spontaneously came into my mind. I never forget when my father said, um, of course my father is has gone uh, into the spirit world <clears throat> more than 25 years ago. But I I still remember when I was a teenager that that he would say, it is not fair that whole, that the young men or, or the youth or the people of the country have to give their lives in wars, wars that they did not start, but the, the heads started, right? Or groups of, of people that were inspired by certain personalities and persons that attacked and and created horror. My father always said, it should be the heads of the government or the heads of all of the tribe leaders, everyone who started the, the fight should be in the fight and decided and leave the people, leave the families leave the husbands, the wives, the, the, the mothers, the daughters, 
the sisters, the aunts, leave the people alone. They should not suffer. But of course, they, they would be part of the outcome, right? And then the outcome needs to be negotiated. So anyway, this was um, something that I never forget because um, it is so horrific when you see, when you understand, when you know um, the amount of lives that are lost in wars, wars, some cannot be prevented, but most of them can be prevented, right? So <clears throat> your, your true nature wants to be found and honored and your true nature is peace and love and community and collaboration and working with each other. And all of us are waking up to a greater awareness of our own consciousness as the veil of false beliefs and, and manipulations disappear, it reveals the beauty, the truth, and the authentic power of the divine self, which is embodied in every person. Every person has nothing to do with um, creed or with race or with um, gender with age. So does perception change everything? That is a beautiful question. I leave with you to explore in your life. Perhaps the soap bubbles that I experienced all the way back then have something to tell you too. Or the moon that seems to race across the sky. Something that you perceive as true, as truth. Maybe question it, test it, see it from different angles. I want you to know that love is the antidote in this world where fear seems to rise. I understand that loving yourself can sometimes feel selfish, but let me assure you that it is an essential act of healing for your beautiful being. And we all need healing at this time because we are all affected, even though it's not in our country, the war or the atrocities. We are all affected. We are all connected in this field of magnetic resonance. Now more than ever, it is time to let the profound intelligence of your heart be your guide. Your heart knows the way, my beloveds. It knows the path to healing, to growth and love. And even though your primal instinct may bring forth fear and anxiety, remember that it exists only to protect and keep you safe. Within you, there resides an extraordinary gift, your inner hero. Your inner hero may be dormant, patiently waiting to be awakened. And this inner hero has the power to not only heal your own being, but also to bring healing to our relationships and communities and the whole planet. It is a boundless source of support, wisdom, and love. So take a moment to embrace stillness, my beloveds. Allow yourself to listen deeply to the whispers of your inner hero, heroic self-love. You can establish a profound connection through meditation and uncover the depths of your purpose and destiny. Remember, it's natural to stumble and fall back into old habits sometimes, but hold firm to your determination. You deserve a life filled with fulfillment, joy, and abundant health, and love, and communication, and community. 
The love that flows within you is the beacon of light that can transform your existence and the world around you. Embrace your inner hero, your self-love, and let its loving guidance lead you to the life of profound meaning and purpose. This infinite compassion and love. Take this into your in, into the whole week until we meet again next Saturday. Thank you for the time that you have shared with me here. I know your time is precious. And I am so grateful that you have shared this time with me. And please remember, if you liked what I shared with you, come back here. Yes, come back next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern time, 12 noon Pacific time. All of my love to you. Bye-bye for now. <music>